happy to introduce Camden Mills. Camden is the manager of um, uh, capital projects for the city. Uh, and with, with him is Nick Patel, who we've heard speak before. But Camden, um, it occurred to me when um, I thought of inviting him, uh, plays a really, really important role in the city in the implementation of capital improvement uh, programs. And particularly this time of year as FY24 budgets are coming before us, it seemed to be kind of timely to meet him and um, have him make remarks. And then he and Nick have agreed to be available for questions. Uh, Camden has fairly recently been promoted. Congratulations. And comes with a, uh, I've circulated his bio. So we know he comes well qualified with from an engineering background. And um, again, his role is um, a kind of an unsung hero of, of sorts in the background of a lot of stuff that's critically important to DISCA. So without further ado, and Camden and I have been in communication, he'll be remarking, making remarks for 15 minutes or so, and then we'll move into a question and answer period. So Camden, uh, welcome and uh, take it away. Thanks, David, and uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks for having me here today. Um, as you guys are aware, you know, this is comprised about 12,000 residents and uh, very concentrated, you know, less than two square miles. Uh, so you guys play a very important part in our city and, you know, constitute a, a big part of our citizenship. Um, so it's great to have the opportunity to come here and connect with you guys and share what our uh, capital projects division has in the works. Um, I got a uh, slideshow presentation here um, so you guys can follow along. As I go through this, I'll be covering a pretty large amount of information this afternoon. So I ask that you please withhold any questions to the end. And then, uh, you know, me and Nick will be here to help field those. And I'm more than happy to share this presentation um, with any of you guys afterwards. Um, so you can follow up with me if you have any additional questions after this meeting. Uh, just to give you a little bit of back. Oh, sorry. Let's see if they can. Let's see if they can. Uh, so, give you guys a brief uh, background info. Me, uh, thanks for introducing me, David. So, I was born and raised in this area. Uh, I'm from Bradenton, Florida. I graduated from the University of Florida in civil engineering. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Florida. I uh, previously worked in the private sector, specializing in land development for commercial and residential developments, um, primarily throughout Southwest Florida. And I have experience with the planning, engineering, design, and construction of private sector and public sector capital projects. Uh, my role at the city, as David mentioned, I joined uh, recently in July 2021, so I've been here about a year and a half. 
and I serve as the operations or production manager for uh, the capital projects division of, of our public works department. Um, so give you an agenda of some of the topics I'll be covering today. Um, I'll go over a high level overview of um, what our capital project division consists of, um, give you guys a description of our five-year capital improvement program. So I'm a little ahead of that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just to resize. I'm not sure. Which why it's resizing? So that's fine. I can I can keep going. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I want to give you a brief overview of uh, what the capital projects division consists of. I'll give you a description of our five-year CIP program. Go over the budget calendar um, and how our CIP process goes into, into adoption. Um, talk about some of the downtown capital projects we currently have in the works. Um, go over some upcoming regulation updates that will you know, affect this area. And then also have a question and answer period at the end for y'all. Um, so give you an update on, on what our capital division uh, consists of. This is uh, under the city engineer. It's a branch of our public works department. And under our city engineer, we have uh, five main divisions. Engineering, who handles the private development and the permitting review our transportation planning, who heads the projects up from the very beginning um, stages, our surveying department, our capital projects, um, which is what I'm in, and then our infrastructure and right-of-way maintenance. So over our capital projects um, division, we take projects over from the 30% design phase and onwards. So anything that gets past the planning stage, we take on and then we see it through construction. Uh, but with that, you know, we work hand in hand with all the various divisions that, that are under our, the umbrella of the city engineer. Uh, we're comprised of engineering technicians, project coordinators, inspectors, designers, as well as other professional engineers. And, and ultimately, we're responsible for implementing the uh, capital improvement plan, overseeing the design of capital projects and assisting in the development of our, of our five year program. So our current uh, five-year capital improvement program is about $224 million. Um, of that, this year's plan for fiscal year 22-23 is about just $47 million. Um, there's several sources of funding uh, for this program, uh, penny sales tax, the gas tax, uh, multimodal transportation impact fees, alternative sources such as state appropriation and grants, um, as, among other sources of funding. And we break our uh, CIP program into various project categories that um, you can kind of see here on this graph, but they range from environmental preservation and sustainability, uh, residents and neighborhoods, growth and development, operations and administration, city owned facilities, parks and rec, and then our water and sewer drinking water and administration for that department. On our current five year program, which takes us out through 2027, we have over 100 projects identified in that plan. Um, among that, over 40 of those projects are going to be directly managed by the Public Works Department and, and come through our Capital Projects Division. Uh, next, I want to talk about our budget calendar and how we formulate our CEIP program. This is a five-year program, but it's something that gets updated annually each year. Um, in that calendar, as you can see, it's pretty much a year-long process. We start early on. In this phase, um, city staff is gathering requests that we're going to put forth onto our next um, budget request. And in February, all the departments in the city have that initial budget kickoff meeting where it really starts to get things going. Um, you'll see in July, we have time dedicated for city commission budget workshops. Um, this is a very important time frame. This is the opportunity when we get the residents input and they can share that with our commissioners and our constituents and, and help develop, you know, the program that needs to, to best serve everyone. Um, so those two budget workshops, they will be held this year. Um, the dates are to, to be determined. So, um, you know, stay, stay informed and we'll try and keep put that information out as soon as we get it um, so we can make sure we're involved our residents. But as you can see, you know, throughout the year, there's there's different stages of how this, this CIP program is being developed. Next, uh, I want to talk about some of the downtown capital projects that we have underway um, right now. First, I'll get into a couple that were recently completed. Um, next, please. First of those is the Ringling Trail project. This project added a protected bicycle lane on Ringling Boulevard between Pineapple Avenue and Lime Avenue. 
Um, we ask, you know, with new drivers, this is a big change. This is the first kind of complete streets protected bicycle trail in this region, really. Um, so we're kind of hitting, hitting the forefront here for this area. We ask that you please be alert and cautious as drivers and cyclists adjust to this new traffic pattern. Um, you know, it will be a little bit of a learning curve, but overall it's going to provide enhanced safety um, for pedestrians as, as well as um, our, our bicycle riders. And we'll be looking at a future CIP request to enhance this project even further, um, take it to the next stage, provide additional landscape islands, provide additional medians, um, improve transit accommodations, as well as other safety operations and aesthetics. So this is a project that we see developing over the, over the course of uh, many years as, as more funding becomes available. Um, another project I want to touch on that is currently under construction that I'm sure you guys are all very aware of is the US and 41 Gulf Stream Roundabout. Um, that became operational just before Christmas. Um, so now you can fully use the operation of, of the traffic circle. Um, so pretty soon we'll start to see impacts and how this will possibly impact you know, traffic throughout this region. And again, with that, you know, we ask that you please be alert and approach with caution. Um, you, as users, address a new traffic pattern. You know, observe observe signage, watch for pedestrians, and make sure to yield to vehicles that are that are currently. <laughs> Um, and this project right now, the roadway portion of it is anticipated to be completed in January, February of this year. Um, then they'll be moving into the landscape portion of it, which will be in the surrounding area and then in the, in the center of the circle. That uh, will be letting in February of this year and will be turned over towards the end of this year in November. Um, and, and this project or this roundabout is also identified in our city's artwork and roundabout project. So we may be seeing, you know, some artwork sculpture going in here in, in the future. Um, another project I'd like to talk about, which is away from the construction phase, but into the procurement phase. So these are projects that we have shovel ready to move forward towards construction. We're just working through um, getting, getting the contracts out and getting the contractors on board so we can start construction. First of those is 10th Street and US 41 roundabout, where we'll be putting an art sculpture in the center of that roundabout. There'll be a, a series of retaining walls um, that are tiered at different levels in the center of the roundabout to help protect the sculpture. And, and ultimately we see um, this project as serving as a component of speech management. It'll help to slow the traffic and also uh, promote placemaking efforts. This project um, was designed and coordinated with the Florida Department of Transportation since it is within, within their roadway. And this will be one of the first artwork in the roundabout projects on a state road. Um, so again, you know, we're, we're kind of setting the bar here in the city of Sarasota. For the 10th Street roundabout, it's gonna be a 20 foot high art piece on a 15 by foot 15 concrete base. Um, we're looking to bid this construction in early 2023, um, starting construction around April and May. Uh, finishing up around August, September, and making sure that our piece is installed before next season comes around so we're not impacting um, season's traffic. Um, along lines with 10th Street, we're also doing the same thing at 14th Street. Um, that's that's going to be another 20-foot high sculpture. Um, the difference here on this project, other than the art piece itself, is we're doing a circular um, retaining wall design that, again, will be stepped tiered up. Um, and it's going to improve landscaping, irrigation, lighting. Um, so it's really going to enhance, help enhance that corridor. Can I know the art piece has been selected? They have been selected and they're both um, being manufactured as we speak. And one of those is actually coming from Spain. So you can imagine the coordination between not only the metric and imperial unit conversions, but also just dealing with a, you know, a sculpture from Spain getting over here. It, uh, it'll be a fun project for sure. Next will be the Ringling Boulevard and Pine Place Roundabout. This is another one that we'll be looking to bid out for construction fairly soon. Um, this is a project that we joined up with with FDOT. It's uh, part of their local agency program where they'll do um, provide funding and help facilitate a project on local roads. Um, so this, this will be a really great joint partnership with them. But again, this is to remove a signalized span wire intersection and replace it with a modern roundabout. Uh, the limits of this project will extend um, to the roundabout on Orange Avenue, and we'll be tying it into the recent improvements with the Ringling Trail to maintain the consistent bike corridor throughout. Uh, next one is a connected and autonomous vehicle pilot. Again, this is a project that we're teaming up with, with FDOT, and is really a pilot project to install new and emerging technologies for transportation management within the city. 
Overall, we've identified 19, 91 priority inter intersections that we want to have this program in. We're getting ready to move forward into the first phase of that, which hits 15 intersections. Um, so on this map here, you can see where those are. Um, the technology that's going to be part of this program essentially is just cameras and data sensors installed on existing infrastructure. Um, this equipment will be purchased by FDOT. They're going to provide the equipment, the software, the support hardware, and then the city, it'll help the city help monitor traffic conditions, uh, providing messages to the traveling public through the equipment um, that have autonomous vehicles that, that are able to accept this. So it's really, you know, taking to the next step into the future on providing safe, safe mobility. Um, this project will provide real-time information messaging, disseminated travel with the public, um, and FDOT and the city will, will keep track of that. Um, the type of message that, this, that these sensors will pick up uh, include roadside alerts, traveling information message, intersection movement assistance, work zone signage, uh, school zone warnings, collision <coughs> avoidance, and pedestrian warnings. So for incidents of a pedestrian accident steps out in front of the intersection, camera's going to pick up on that. It'll send the alert to your vehicle, and your vehicle will say, hey, warning, we need to stop. So it's, it's really the cutting edge technology um, that we're looking to move forward with here. Uh, next, I want to get into a few projects that we have that are in the design phase um, that aren't quite ready to be implemented in the field, but, but we're getting close. Uh, one of them is a smart city initiative. It's a sea level rise and red tide monitor initiative that we're working on with Moat Marine Laboratories. Um, the purpose of this project is to collect more data on red tide and water quality and sea level rise. Um, to help us in early prevention and mitigation techniques to start attacking red tide before it gets here, and also being able you know, help us when to identify, when to respond, and developing methods for cleanup and debris elimination. That way, um, you know, when the bl blooms come in and, and impact our areas, we want to minimize that as much as possible. Um, we're hoping this collaboration with Moat will create a better platform for the public and our decision makers. We want to um, expand the coverage of an existing system that Mode already has, their beach conditions reporting system, mm -hmm. and integrate our reporting data for red tide into that. So essentially the public will have one public placing platform that they can access to find out conditions of our beaches, all our right ways or road um, waterways, and how impact uh, of red tide or any other um, sea level rises is in the area. Next, I um, want to talk about extension of Legacy Trail through Payne Park. Uh, we're calling this project the Alderman Multi-Use Recreational Trail. The design for this project has been completed. Um, we're currently applying for a grant for construction funding. We've been told that we will be awarded that grant, so our next phase will be to move forward with an environmental clearance report um, that's required for the grant, and once that's completed, we'll be ready to move forward to construction. So we see that happening um, again later towards the end of this fiscal year. And that'll pick up um, from the Legacy Trail, where the county recently completed here on School Avenue. We'll be picking it up there, taking it along the south side of Payne Park, and then and then over to Alderman. Um, just another connection of our, our, our bike facilities that we're, we're filling in the gap. <laughs> Ultimately, trying to get as many people as we can from the Lexi Trail to downtown and, and openly, ultimately up to the bay and our barrier islands. Um, the next project I want to discuss, um, which I'm sure you guys are all very interested in, is the Boulevard of the Arts and 10th Street Complete Streets. So as you know, the limits for both of these projects for the 10th Street goes from 41 to Orange Avenue. And for Boulevard of the Arts is from the bay just past Orange Avenue. Um, previously, we had applied for a federal grant um, last year for this project to get funding for additional design and for construction. We were awarded a Project of Merit Award, and the USDOT uh, invited us to reapply this next cycle. Um, so we're hoping our application uh, will get approved this time around, and, and we really think it's going to be a strong candidate. Um, some pro proposed improvements you'll see on this project, um, intersection and streetscape improvements, reduced pedestrian crossing distance at crosswalks, wider sidewalks, um, separated and protected bicycle lanes, and undergrounding of utilities. Um, this project is identified by the city as a 2023 state appropriations priority project, um, so we're asking for some state appropriations here. Um, we uh, Go to the next slide, please. 
some of the work that's already been completed on this project so far is we've had our initial community survey and outreach to get um, some of the needs and wants of what the residents want to see along these corridors. We've retained a design consultant to take us up to that planning phase through the 30% phase. Um, that 30% design has been completed along with some long range estimates and some typical sections and concepts. So we're using that, uh, that new information to help beef up our grant application for, for this next go around. And then from now we'll be taking it from the 30% phase on. Um, that'll be initiated um, this spring. So our next step is moving the phase two this spring. Um, that'll include more public outreach, um, an environmental socioeconomic review um, for federal requirements, as well as taking things up to 60% design. Um, so getting away from the concept level and getting more into the nitty gritty of you know, how this is actually gonna work with our, our existing infrastructure. Are there gonna be more roundabouts on City Street? We're looking at right now putting one on orange. Okay. Orange and 10. Um, next project I want to get into is Main Street Complete Streets. Um, potential improvements we can see from this project include conversion from angle to parallel parking, widened sidewalks, landscape enhancement, and we're also going to consider um, pedestrian malls at certain times and locations. Um, again, this project is the very preliminary stage, so we're going to go through the, the planning and the public outreach before we get into the detailed design. So really, this project is going to be head up more from our transportation planning division, but through that, you know, capital project stays involved throughout the development of all of these projects. Um, so we can make sure, you know, engineering and planning are, are working hand through hand throughout. Um, and again, Main Street, similar to Boulevard of the Arts, is identified as a city uh, priority project for 2023 state appropriations. Next, I want to talk about our Fruitville Road and US 41 roundabout community aesthetic feature. This is similar to the project um, I previously discussed at 10th and 14th Street, where we're looking to put artwork sculptures in the center of the roundabout. Um, right now, our public art committee has selected three finalists um, to design the art piece. So once the public art committee and our, our city commission decides on the artists that we're going to move forward with, then we'll start working with a consultant to design and permit this. Um, so the Fruitville Road is um, a little further down the line. It won't be this fiscal year that we'll see it, but probably next year in 23-24, we'll see the design and permitting of this come online. And again, this is a project that's identified in the city's Art and Roundabouts program. Next project I want to talk about is Coconut Avenue and 2nd Street Roundabout. Um, we're here, we're looking at installing a new modern roundabout at the intersection of Coconut and sec Second to improve vehicle flow and pedestrian safety. Um, some potential improvements you can see with this are landscape center islands, public art, reduced pedestrian crossing distance, as well as um, traffic calming. So again, this is a project that's early on in the planning stages. This is a preliminary concept you see here in the graphic, um, but we look probably next fiscal year, we'll be getting into the design and then a year after that, we'll be moving towards construction. Um, but this is in our Sarasota in Motion Transportation Master Plan for the city of Sarasota. This was identified as a, as a high priority project. Um, Next, I want to get into Fruitville Road Complete Streets. So this is a project that's been talked about uh, for a long time now um, in the past. And our city administration has requested that we uh, reevaluate this project and start looking at potential options and solutions to improve this corridor. Uh, we'll be submitting requests for our upcoming CIP program to include this program for this project further down the line. Um, as you can see here in this graphic, we're looking at starting the planning and conceptual development and public outreach in fiscal year 23-24, and then in the subsequent years moving towards engineering and, and construction. Our goals right now for this project are to improve pedestrian connections between the downtown and the Rosemary District while maintaining vehicle level of service. Uh, we want to replace existing signet poles and create a livable urban space um, that's, that's more accessible for the public. Uh, potential improvements you may see are ADA improvements, widened sidewalks, layer on name width uh, to accommodate those wider, safer sidewalks, improved crossings at Coconut, Lemon, Central, and Orange, high visibility pedestrian crosswalk markings, um, bike detection at the traffic signals, um, enhanced transit accommodation and bus stops, and develop parallel bikeways between 2nd Street and 4th Street. 
So again, this is this is a project that we're evaluating to try and incorporate in, into our CIP program as we go forward. Um, the next project I want to talk about is the Rosemary Park Pocket Park. Um, so this is occurring, you know, on city city owned property, but this really is a private public partnership. Um, it's really a cool project to, to see come into fruition. Um, the public survey was previously conducted. Um, with that, the consultant that was retained developed three different concepts. Um, so the results of the survey were shared to utilize and understand uh, identified features and components. And concept A um, is a more of an urban design. The concept B is more of an artful design. And concept C is more tranquil design. So the public um, submitted survey provided their inputs on which of these designs they like. Um, Kimberly Horn, the design consultant, are going to take those survey results from the three ideas, try to refine that into two. And then it looks like they'll be submitting more information to the city um, early, early this month, or by the end of this month, actually. Um, to see where this project's going forward into the next steps. Um, so I encourage you guys to, ro to visit rosemaryparkorg uh, for more information on this project. And, and as I mentioned, later this month, uh, the city should have a better idea on, on where we're narrowing down these three concepts. And a couple projects I uh, don't have slides for, but that are in the works, uh, just to put you guys um, on notice for it. Second Street and Orange Avenue. And fiscal year 23-24, we'll be looking to add that into our program for planning, engineering, and design of uh, safety improvements. And then US 41 at Main Street and US 41 at Ringling Boulevard. Ultimately, we'd like to put roundabouts at both of those, uh, those areas. Um, those were identified in the Florida Department of Transportation and the Metropolitan Planning Organization's Long Range Transportation um, Plan. So both those roundabouts are something that we look to start the planning on in fiscal year 24, 25, and, and probably construction wouldn't come around until, you know, 2030, because um, we'll be there on you know, big projects. Some regulation updates we have in the works that our, our capital projects division has their hand in. Uh, first off is the engineering design criteria manual. So the city is updating the EDCM to improve the quality of design in the community. This is the design standard manual that's used by private and public sector engineers to develop within the right way and also develop within private property. Um, so it affects, you know, capital projects when we're designing, you know, within our right way for roadways and things like that, but also the developers that are working on um, other condos and residential developments in the area. The last update of this manual took place in 2002, so we're, we're due for a reboot here. The new EDCM will support the city's vision for a world-class community and treasure destination with enduring beauty, charm, and diversity. Um, the EDCM is actively in the revision process through this October, 2023. Um, during this time, the city will be collecting recommendations for the changes um, sections of the EDCM. We're planning on holding three public meetings throughout the process. Um, we've had our first public meeting um, earlier in 2022. This was, purpose of this meeting was to inform the public of what the city is doing, uh, present the findings in, of the existing conditions analysis, some of the best practices, and discover some opportunities for design standards updates. Um, really, we, we met with a lot of different um, people, part of this, you know, residents, um, stakeholders, developers, engineers, really everyone that's involved with this manual provided their input. And, and it was good to see, you know, some of the infrastructure challenges within the community that we can um, improve on with, with this manual update. So our next meeting uh, will be in May of 2023. So I encourage all of you to attend that so we can talk about some of the potential changes that we're, we're proposing to move forward with here and, and get your feedback on that. And the next um, regulation update I want to discuss with you all is the multimodal transportation impact fees. So the multimodal impact fees is revenue generated from new development. Um, typically, this ranges about $750,000 to $1.2 million a year of, of revenue generated. Um, the program expenditures currently uh, provide funding for our advanced traffic management system, um, Second Street and Orange intersection improvements, our legacy trail network, uh, multi-use recreational trails, and, and bike route improvements. Will Public Works Department and our Planning Department, we're going to be looking at the uh, previous impact fee study that was uh, conducted in the court in the current ordinance that's in place and, and revisit those. Uh, we're looking to provide some clarification on the usage uh, and updates on the fees and then also designate um, the projects that from this 
from the fees uh, generated towards. So again, I ask you guys to please, um, you know, stay involved through our through our city's outreach, um, so we can get you guys get your feedback. <laughs> have our public meetings at that time. And with that, uh, I'll open it up for, for some questions and answers. And, and again, I ask you guys, you know, please follow our city website and our social media pages um, so you can get the latest information from us. Up here is my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me um, to discuss any of these projects or any other projects that you'd like to see come on board in the future. And again, you know, I can't stress it enough to please stay engaged, actively participate and provide your feedback. So ultimately, Oh, hey, Camden, thanks so much. That was terrific. Just first class. Um, uh, as promised, uh, can we open it up for questions from uh, board members uh, who might have a, a question or a comment to make? Absolutely. Yep, we got a couple of hands raised here already. Uh, okay. I'm, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, Ken, I think I see you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm usually in a hole in the ground. I understand that. But it, um, Camden, when you were talking about the Main Street project, you used the phrase pedestrian malls. Can you explain that? Sure. Um, so a pedestrian mall is more of an area that, you know, we wanted to have special events. We could close it down for traffic. So it would be the road strictly being able to use for, for pedestrian. Would that so be a Main Street or one of the side streets like Lemon or? It's to be determined at this point. It's just it's kind similar. of a concept idea that we want to consider. Yeah, it's um, similar to the Walmart market, you know, when you close it down. Uh -huh. So I mean, it's more. You know, it would not be a permanent thing. It would be. Well, a, I mean, it's all going to be evaluated. I mean, what we're hearing is we're hearing different merchants have different views of it. You know, condos have different views on it. So what we want to do is we're still in the early stages. What we want to do is we want to use the public really get some feedback as to what they'd like to see in the street you know, as we as we get a different complete street. It's actually an old concept that Gil Waters promoted years ago. I don't know whether that name means anything to you, but he led the, the creation of the new Ringling Bridge. Mm -hmm. He was on the city commission back in the 50s. He had a lot to do with mm -hmm. the way the Bayfront looks today. And he wanted to create a pedestrian mm -hmm. mall on Main Street downtown. Like the European cities. And if I just may add, in around 2010 11, this group, as well as other members downtown, when we were looking at the redo of Lower Main Street, we had in that design <coughs> hydraulic walls that would rise and block off the traffic uh, that, that was killed in that design. But we were looking at having uh, pedestrian malls on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and you just raise the ballads and, and cut off the traffic. So. Some of this stuff may be in your historical record and save a little time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, so what we're going to do is oh. we're going to evaluate just for Main Street, and we're, we just want feedback as to what, what, what the, you know, what the locals are, our communities are okay. oh. Good. And then moving along, Kathy. Yeah. Um. One clarification on the 10th Street and Free One. Um. Um. I'm sorry. Boulevard of the Arts and 10th Street. You said 60% completion. You, you talked about 30%, 60%. Is there a, do you have a timeline for that 60% completion? Um, I might have missed it if it was on. <laughs> not yet. Um, okay, so it's not going to be this year or we're looking down the road for that. Is that correct? It, it probably wouldn't be this year. Um, it probably lead into next year. But right now, that's to be determined. Um, right now, we're putting the scope together to send out um, for a consultant to Take it from the 30 to 6 percent phase. So during that negotiation, when we'll determine that schedule. Let me, but. Let me clarify that. Um, the intent right now is that we we have a USDA two plan that we're estimating for, okay. and based on we're hoping to hear back later this year. Okay. And in the interim, we're going to continue on to 60 percent design, and our plan is to get it done by the end of the year. Um, by end of the year. Okay. So if we do exactly that, that's how given the grant that we have options right now. Sure, they are Nick, I was just gonna yeah, ask you to speak up more when you're okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, so what I was gonna say was that we we submitted a grant. We're gonna be submitting another grant again with UCT for a tenth and full arts arts. And later on, you know, Camden and his team is gonna 
hire a consultant, get it to 60%. And by the time we hear back from USDOT, we're hoping that if we were to get the grant, that we have options available to start construction potentially. Um, so it'll be shovel ready. Shovel ready. Okay. And then the other quick okay. question about that was the um, alley restoration. We talked about that. That's not in this at all. Is that something that's like in the EDM? That's a it's been brought up before by Eric Arroyo and, and you mean, Wilson. Yes, so, so the alleys, we are going to look at the design internally. We're looking at one option. Again, okay. we're still, um, and, and my thought is the main street that we're developing, the complete street side of it. We also want to kind of evaluate the alley because they are playing the, it is interesting to see how alleys are put, playing a different role mm -hmm. today. You know, a lot more pedestrian activities are happening on alleys. So, you know, that's also going to be considered as part of the main street, complete streets as we look at the alleys. Okay. Um, Nick, I had one. Um, I think I've, I've, this, is, this comment is no surprise to you, but in the uh, CIP for this year, there's penny tax money um, in, in to help fund Boulevard of the Arts and 10th. Um, I'm, I'm some concern that we might be putting all of our eggs in the basket of getting grants. Are you seeing a uh, uh, additive kind of approach as a, poss a possibility where we have penny tax, multimodal fees, and a grant to help fund some of these projects? Yeah, good, good question. And what's different with this infrastructure bill that we had compared to previous infrastructure bills is that there's a lot more skin in the game. What I mean by that is that, you know, USDOT likes to see um, local municipalities, counties, or state to provide a match. So what the challenge is in the past, they used to just give you the money and say, hey, here's money to, to build a project X. Now they want us to see, hey, what match do you have? And usually, depending on the grants, it's 80-20, 60-40, um, depending on which grant you're looking at. So, you know, if, if you really want to transform the corridors the way you really want to transform the corridors, it's going to take a lot of, you know, it's, it's going to be a high construction dollars. So, so our thought is that we have to leverage the infrastructure bill in the next five years to transform some of these um, some of these uh, roadways that we have, like Tampa Boulevard to Arts, for example. Would that be designated grants or block grants? It's 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 a raised grant. So so USDOT has multiple right. different grants because they didn't write in the block grants in the new infrastructure bill. They didn't. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm afraid, uh, time-wise, we have time for one more question. Do we have anybody? Yeah, Nick, uh, Nick McCann, thank you, thank you so much, um, Nick and Cam. Nick, we've talked a lot. In the original master plan, there was a uh, RIV, a roundabout at uh, Boulevard of the Arts, the Tamiya Trail. As a matter of fact, the conservancy leaders stressed that due to complaints about high traffic, it was one of the central ideas that was being pushed. When did that roundabout disappear? Because it's not there anymore. We don't know whether or not there's ever been a change. Nobody ever informed us the roundabout was going to be taken out of the master plan. It is in the master plan. There's no doubt about that. Why was it taken? And let me preface that by saying, I'm kind of disabled. And I've tried to cross that street. And I know how dangerous it is. Let me put you on one leg and see how easily you get across. So my suggestion is, where is my ground? <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's the question. And, and I'm just going to state the facts the way they are. You know, so, so originally, there was a plan to do a roundabout. So Kim and Horn did. You know, we had a consultant put a, a concept together. And long story short is that it would require um, you know, eminent domain or private property in order for us to build, really construct a roundabout. And due to um, how quickly the Quay lot wanted to get developed, you know, and at the end of the day, based on 
the land that we need to build a roundabout, it's just we just don't have the land to, to build a roundabout. That, that is, that's the essential, uh, you know, facts right now is that we just don't have the, the city doesn't have the or the DOT does not have the land to construct that roundabout. That we you have major traffic concerns coming that both pedestrian traffic. Uh, you got roughly two to three thousand new units coming up. You may. Boulevard of the Arts on the principal walkways, and yet the one thing that you have emphasized throughout the course of this meeting is the importance around it. And you've done a wonderful job, except for the one place where you originally planned to do it. <laughs> now, please explain that to me so I can go back to the folks of BLBD and explain the reason why the master plan doesn't seem to work for us, because you know we're right there on that question. But yeah. it does seem to work for every place else. It's the land's not there. I mean, I'm just being direct, you know. But what, what we are going to do to is, is do an option B, which we, we're working with the DOT to do a raised intersection. And a raised intersection is an alternative to, to uh, it's not, unfortunately, it's not the roundabout, but it is going to be something else to to, to ensure pedestrians feel safe to, to cut, to go across US 40. That's your opinion in Canada. Is there any reason why the city would not engage in eminent domain in order to make sure that a safe roundabout was there in place of a raised area, which may not really be good enough until the first three, four, five, six of us get killed? I mean, we can certainly ask the DOT to do it, and we can, you know, I'll recommend. Um, you know, talk to commission at this point, but I mean, unfortunately, we just don't have the land. That's that's a reality. That's where we. It, it gets back into that situation now. As far as I'm not pushing them in the domain side of it. It's it's a matter of if we can get the land. And part of the land uh, is the place that we look at uh, that portion of that land. Uh, well, actually, under the discussion <coughs> of that roundabout area. It wasn't that we didn't have the land. We had the land. We didn't have the finances. That land became so expensive that even in, on the eminent domain, we couldn't afford to buy the extra pieces of land. The land's there, but it's prohibitively cost because it's so so valuable to developers. That, that's the, re the real reason. The land is there. The finance is not money to buy that land is not there. That's correct. Did the DOT, uh, the federal war state, already approve that roundabout as it was originally going to master plan? It's in their, it's in their, it's in, it's in their um, work program plans, but it's, 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 it's it, they haven't even started the planning side of it, you know, so it hasn't been funded. Okay, uh, hey, uh, folks, this is, uh, uh, Victor, thanks for bringing that up, and uh, I'm afraid we're running out of time here, but I, I've, first of all, the, the presentation calendar was incredibly informative. I've got some comments and questions, and I think I will take it on me to kind of pull other board members, possibly to come back to you with some comments and questions for clarification. But I, I think your presentation was just first class. It hit on all cylinders, the things that um, downtown residents, I think, are are uh, interested in, and it was very clear. So, would you please send the presentation uh, to me, if okay, and then we can share it around. Uh, David, we have a copy here, so I'll, I'll do that. Back okay. PDF in okay. our online link on our newsletter, uh, where we recap the meeting. Right. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, Nick and Camden, thank you very much. And uh, as promised, we will let you guys go now. You're welcome to stick around, but if you've got other things to do, uh, you're you're welcome to leave. We uh, we appreciate you being with us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Appreciate okay. It. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you.